Hello and welcome to the shop. Today's video is going to focus on how I go about drilling my blanks. This will cover everything from the tools that I use to the setup of the drill press. I hope you enjoy the video. I received this blank a while back from Jeff Walker and it has my logo and then it says YouTube legend on it. I don't know about the legend part, but uh, I really love the blank and I've been wanting to turn it for a while. Today, what I thought I would do is walk you step by step through the process I use to prepare a blank for uh, receiving a tube. And I'll go through everything from the initial prep work uh, through drilling the blank so that it is ready for glue up. On a solid wood blank, it's not necessarily that important that you drill perfectly down the center of the blank. So when I get ready to drill, I'll just kind of eyeball the center and go ahead and run the bit through it. On a blank like this, it's far more critical because if the tube is not perfectly centered in the blank, the blank is just not going to look right final turned. This is a tool specifically designed to find the center of small objects. Now, I purchased it off of eBay. I don't remember who I got it from, but the maker is Tay Tools, and I will put a link in the uh, description of the video. The way this tool works is, you put the corner of the blank into the tool, and you can kind of see on the back how it's laid out, but you put the blank into the corner. This works well on round stock also. We're gonna draw us a little line here. Then we're gonna rotate the blank 90 degrees, put it back into the corner, and we're just gonna draw intersecting lines. I like to do all four corners, and I'll show you why in a second. Take a look at this. This blank, notice how um, from this corner to this corner, it's almost dead on, but from this corner to this corner, there is a difference. But we now can see, we take our punch, we now can see that the center is somewhere in the middle of this line. So I'm gonna go right in the center of that line. I'm gonna pop it one time. And now what you can see is I have a perfectly centered hole or a perfectly centered dimple on my blank and I'm ready to go to the drill press and I should now be able to drill perfectly straight down the center of this blank. I'm over at the drill press and I've got my 27 64 inch bit chucked up. This is the bit that we're going to use to drill our blank. What I need to do now is make sure that my bit is perfectly perpendicular to my table so that I drill straight down the center of my blank. I've seen a lot of people and what they'll do is they'll throw a level on their table. And if the table comes up level, they're like, yeah, I'm ready to rock and roll. That's not necessarily so. Let's say that the floor of your shop is off. So you have adjusted your table to be level because ideally you want, you really want to adjust your entire drill press. But let's say your table appears to be level. It still may not be perpendicular to your bit. So even if your drill press is not level because your shop floor, like mine, is rather wavy. Uh, I do have a shim under my drill press to stop it from shifting. You can see it will shift a little bit. I probably need to kick it in a little tighter. What I like to do is bring my rafter square over and I'll set it right against my drill bit. And if I look down beside the bit, I don't see any light coming from behind uh, the bit. So that means I've got a nice square fit against my rafter square, which means I'm perpendicular to my table. If I did not have a good fit, there's a couple of options. My table has a locking nut on the back and I can rotate the table left or right to whatever angle I want it. So if I want to put something on here and turn, turn it to a 30 degree angle to drill down into it, I can adjust the table. I can also adjust the, the main headstock of uh, my drill press uh, with another lock nut that will allow me to tilt it to whatever angle I desire. But at this point, we have determined that we are perfectly perpendicular to the table and now ready to drill our blank. There are many different vices for drilling and one is not necessarily better than the other. The main thing is make sure the bottom is completely clean of debris so that you're gonna set perfectly flat on your table. Also make sure that your table has no debris on it. You don't want anything that could, could cause the uh, vice to set not perfectly on the table. Bringing the blank over to the drill press, you can see our marks and I've got the little dimple. I'm using a brad point bit. There is a nice little dimple on that bit. So we're gonna put this in our vise. Go ahead and get our blank locked into our vise. 
and we're now ready to align the blank with the bit and drill. I'm going to turn this a little to the side because it'll be easier for me to operate with the camera. And what I'm doing now is I'm just finding, there we go, I've got my brad point bit in the dimple. We're ready to begin drilling. Now as I drill, one thing you want to make sure of, especially with resin blanks, resin blanks tend to build a lot of heat. All blanks are going to build heat, but resin blanks are going to build heat faster and they're going to build more heat, I've noticed, than most wood blanks. So we're going to want to clear the chips out of our bit as frequently as possible. You want to do the same thing with a wood blank. So we're going to drill maybe a quarter of an inch. We're going to clear the bit. Quarter of an inch, clear the bit, and we'll repeat that process until we've drilled all the way through our blank. Now if we if we get worried or we get nervous, like this particular material, I've never I've never actually drilled through before. So if I get nervous about the heat, I may stop and test my bit. And if I notice the bit is getting hot, I'm going to stop drilling until the bit cools. And the reason why, with resin, it will pack into the bit. And if it is hot, um, it will actually sort of melt, which will cause it to become grabby inside of your blank. And what can happen is it can tear a larger hole down the center of your blank. And the bad thing about that is if the hole in the blank is larger than the bit, you're not going to have good contact with the tube, which means your glue is, it, you're going to have to have more glue in there to hold it. But if you turn the blank down close to the bit, you actually could turn away the blank. So if you've ever turned a blank and at the end of your pin, you've noticed that you can see the tube because you've turned down to the tube, it's probably because you had a hole that was larger than the proper diameter or the diameter of the tube and you essentially just turned away the material. Let's begin drilling the blank. thought I would stop. I'm about halfway through and watch when you touch this because it, it actually can burn your fingers. That blank is blisteringly hot. So what we're going to do is I'm going to shut the camera off. We're going to let this set for just a couple of minutes. We're going to let that cool down. Then we'll finish drilling the remainder of our blank. I've let this set for about five minutes and the bit is back to room temperature. So I'm ready to continue on with the drilling process. When you're drilling a resin blank, as you start to get toward the end of the blank, you want to slow down. Don't just keep chunking through it. Slow down. Let the bit move slowly. Obviously clearing repeatedly. Let the bit move slowly and cut through the bottom of the blank. Otherwise, you could potentially have blowout. Now, you can see I made it through the bottom of the blank because my, my drill vise has a little wood waste block down here. And I think it's made out of MDF and it just grabbed a piece of the MDF material and brought it up. Uh, through the blank. So let's get it out of the vise and see what it looks like. Here's the front or the top. Here's the bottom and it looks like we went right there. You can see I had also marked it on this end of the blank and it looks like we came out dead center on the bottom of the blank. Let's grab a tube and see how the blank looks. I'm going to use my little bottle brush and clean out the inside of the blank. We're going to slide the tube in this end of the blank. I'm going to bring it up close. Let me get a good focus for you. Push it down below surface. Notice there are no gaps around the tube. There's a little bit there. This was the bottom and there's a tiny bit of chip out there, but you'll notice the uh, tube is well within the blank. So I'll be able to center that and you'll never see that. Let me see if I can push this. There we go. Perfect. I want to push the tube through to the other side of the blank. So you can see where we begin drilling. Now let me push it back forward for you. I didn't get it all the way to the end there. There's actually a little bit of a lip there and I'll, I'll uh, that'll come off when we uh, sand it. But you can take a close look and see that there are no 
gaps around that tube. This is exactly what you're looking for, no gaps. Because if you have a gap, as we mentioned earlier, glue adhesion is gonna be an issue and there's always a possibility you could turn away the material at that particular part of the blank. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you found the information provided within to be useful. I would love for you to steal some of the best ideas that I use here and incorporate them into your shop to help enhance your pen making. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop today. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening, everybody.